look at these guys, man. This guy, 29 and 24. Camping. He didn't even move. Camping. Got 29, 24. 32 and 21. Camping. Another guy camping. Can't even get out of the fucking spawn. This guy, 16 and 21, 15 and 9, 3 and 8. And at the end of the game, they want to say that I went 14 and 28. I joined late. I couldn't get anywhere. And you guys watch the gameplays, man. What am I supposed to do? If there's a nanosecond of a pixel and they've been hard scoped at the wall for an hour and a half looking at that pixel, the chance that I have to actually kill them is almost zero. But look at this 250, 250, 224, 250. Our team, 180, 201, 216, 200, 250, and a 50 fucking four. There is skill based match making in this game and the game immediately decides whether or not you're going to win or lose based off of what they say there is no doubt in my mind and that entire blog post was just a bunch of fucking fluff to make it seem like there's an actual chance that you have in this game you don't have nothing All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, Shorty Index. This game plays from a few days ago, the day after they released their skill-based matchmaking talk, which was a bunch of bullcrap, let's be honest. And originally, I wasn't going to use it, but then I decided, you know what? I have to showcase once in a while I don't do good in the game, and sometimes I do get frustrated. So here you guys go to everybody that says I only upload my best gameplay. Here's one of my worst gameplays. But it does shed a little light to the skill-based matchmaking problem. Now, I haven't hit the fact that I constantly get thrown into games that are already started, like this game right here. And I often get thrown into games where one entire team camps and another team has to constantly push that location. Now, I know right off the bat, the comment section is going to be filled with those losers who their only contribution to this entire video and this entire topic, of this entire debate is going to be skill issue. So that's fine. Let's just get it out of the way. Let me backpack the entire team, fix the skill gap between me and the camping guys, and I'll just absolutely one-handedly win this entire game by myself. There, I acknowledged your only comeback ever in the entire history of the internet. Skill issue. Gotcha. Roger, I get it. I didn't do good, so that means immediately I'm a bad player, and immediately means that I couldn't possibly have a legitimate claim, or a legitimate gripe, or a legitimate problem. Every problem that ever exists inside Call of Duty can 100% be summed up by skill issue. Okay, we covered it. We heard you. We got you. It's all covered. I'm bad at the game. Moving on from that. It does show that these maps are incredibly imbalanced. But one team constantly spawns outside behind the plane and constantly spawns at the bottom of the escalator. Another team gets to hold down three massive power points. Those power points being baggage claim, which overlooks the entirety of the plane access point to the map. And they just have to sit there hard scoped and they don't even have to try. They got a red dot sight on, then you know you're dead. So we already eliminate that side of the map. All right, let's push up escalator. Nope, they're going to sit down in the diner and they're going to hard scope the location where we have to come up blindly, by the way, and they're going to shoot you there. All right, that leaves the middle of the map. How do we get in the middle of the map? Oh, we would have to push right through, well, the middle of the map where they can hard scope behind the terminals or security as some people call it, or they can be mounted inside of the actual little gift shop there. So all three points can be covered by one spawn location, meaning that no matter what, this game was a loss. Now remember, Call of Duty Activision definitely put inside of their little press release the variety of gameplay is guaranteed yeah i'm guaranteed to get fucked i'm guaranteed to lose and i'm guaranteed to only do good when you decide that it's time for me to do good based off your algorithmic data that says it's time for my engagement level to be up because let's be real the only time we're having fun in call of duty is when we're doing good that's why every once in a while call of duty goes hey this guy's been doing a lot of bad games here's a good game against a bunch of bots uh -huh. did you have fun you did oh that's so good buy skin or if you don't we're gonna throw you back into another shitty lobby these losers on the other team and yes they're 1000 percent losers why because they're level 250 they sit in their spawn they camp then they have the nerve at the end and all i did was simply ask are you allergic to movement you go 1428 14, 28, 14, 28, 14, 28, and they, that's all they kept saying but yes these are losers this is what call of duty actually rewards is this kind of player these maps are designed for this kind of player even the new map rio is designed for this kind of player the player who refuses to move tactically waits tactically holds down the sight lines or sentinels because it sounds cooler if you say it that way you're a bitch and i hope you know that shit okay it drives me nuts because I don't stay in these games because of this reason. The opening minute and a half of a game is so crucial to the flow of the game that if you do not join immediately and be able to push immediately, your game will be won or lost based off the fact that you weren't there. Let's face it. They'll watch a pro Call of Duty player. They're going to hang out in the same kind of area. They get used to that area. They know that area and they can figure out every single angle in that area immediately watch warzone streamers they often land the same spots they often push to the same routes and they often play the exact same way why because you get comfortable with that meaning that if i'm not there to be able to push to my spot to be able to hold down my side of the map or anything i'm going to constantly be fighting an uphill battle now granted there is ways that we could get around it oh shorty you should have noob tubed shoulda 
I guess I should have done that. Oh, the counter to that is to lob grenades in there and hope you hit them. You could also lob a grenade in there and it rolls out of the door and you never kill them, but you're right. I should have done that. Oh, throw smokes. I'm going to be honest with you. One guy was throwing smokes and there was a thermal user on the other team. Like, what am I going to do? It's one of those things where you just can't win. And us, the players, often end up in these scenarios because Call of Duty doesn't care about the fun of the game. They'll give you your good game when you goddamn well good and earn that good game. And you're not going to get it a moment before. It sucks, but it's the truth. You could play five games in a row and try your absolute hardest out, and we all know what happens. Your one shotgun becomes a three shotgun. All of a sudden, no matter what you do, the enemies are behind you. Or it's like some people like to argue and just nullify any complaints whatsoever. It's COD timing, man. You can't help but that COD timing, man. Weird how COD timing always seems to work for the enemies, but never for me. It's weird how the spawns always seem to work for the enemies, but never for me. It's weird how they always seem to have a one shotgun when I have a two shotgun instead of hardcore. I have literally seen people using a 50 caliber sniper and get hit markers. The game decides when and if you are going to have a good game or not. Do not listen to Activision. Their own freaking developer said right underneath their own tweet about all this that it is bullshit. It's just the way it is, man. You and me and any decent player is going to be able to tell when the flip is switched. When we know that the game no longer is in our favor. You can get into a lobby and within five seconds, a good Call of Duty player is going to go, we lose or we win. I knew the second I got into this lobby was a loss. I almost backed out. I said, you know what? I don't need to make the backing out video anymore. I'm just going to play it out because what's the point? Remember, the Activision developer said that if we back out, it actually hurts our matchmaking experience because it leaves lobbies half empty and they can't keep throwing you into the same one over and over again. So please don't back out the lobbies which is actually code for we don't have enough servers because we're saving money and we're just going to throw you into lobbies no matter what you're just there to fill a spot that's why sometimes if you live in the united states you're all of a sudden thrown into the uk or australia or mexico i get in mexico a lot man i might as well have them stamp my passport at this time in there enough times i basically fluent in spanish now anyways needless to say i wanted to showcase a video where i didn't do good where i versed a team of campers who never pushed outside of their spawn and i had no ability to counter it if i noob tube the guy on baggage claim then i'm out of noob tubes to then come around and deal with the guy behind the security or i'm gonna get killed by the guy inside a diner or i'm gonna get killed by the guy camping inside of the the shop like no matter what i only have so many tacticals and non-tacticals yet morons seem to think that if somebody complains about a problem in the game that they're single-handedly supposed to fix that there's no player on this earth that would have been good enough to push through this entire camp fest not without cheats and not without aimbot it's quite simple man in a map like terminal the powerpoint is the security section whichever team holds that section and if you get a team that doesn't move oh my god you're gonna definitely have a power struggle on your hands every corner for the team coming up the escalators is a blind corner i had one loser down in my comment section once say what are you going to complain about next that they're shooting back yeah sure why not it's funny how no matter what you say in Call of Duty, if you complain about anything, somebody else is going to say that it's amazing. Somebody else is going to say that it's perfect. Somebody else is just going to say that it's a skill issue. Somebody else is going to say that your problem and your concern is nothing of their concern. So it must mean that it's not their problem. Just because you're okay with going against a bunch of campers does not mean that everybody else is okay with going against a bunch of campers. I built an entire channel based off the fact that we call out the campers. And every single loser on this opposite team is 1000% a camping scumbag. Oh, they're grinding camo short. Stop white knighting these people. Stop coming up with excuses for entire communities because you want the virtue signal on the internet, okay? Nobody cares. Camping sucks. I don't enjoy it. My channel. I'll say it. Going against a team of campers is the worst thing ever. Going against a team of toxic campers is even worse. And going against a team of campers that holds down an entire side of the map and you have no choice but to push into the absolutely fucking stupid choke points that exist on this game is dumb. Three lane maps are stupid. There's a reason why they moved away from them. The only people that enjoy three lane maps are the fucking losers on the other fucking team. They're the only people that would enjoy it because they're mounted on a wall and they don't have to consider about aiming because they know it's a three lane map. So ain't nobody coming from the side. It's dumb. I hope to God in Black Ops 5 that they really do not come down this three-lane route. There needs to be flanks. There needs to be elevation. One team shouldn't be pushing uphill the entire time. Think about it. In order to go up the escalators, you have to go up the escalators. Where your head shows first, then your gun. Meaning you'll get headshot before you can ever even shoot back. You want to go up the plane side? Well, you're going to have to go up inside of the plane, which is once again going up and you're at the disadvantage of the guy above you. Or you're going to have to enter the plane walkway, which is also up. All right, well, the gift store, well, you're going to have to go up the stairs and you're going to have to peek your head on this, by the stairs and they're going to shoot you there too. If you are not on the side of security, you are literally having an uphill fight. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been my rant about Terminal again and campers. If you enjoyed the content, hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe to the Rant Army. And as always, leave a comment down below. Special thank you to our channel members. We started live streaming. Not the best quality, but we're trying. We'll get the settings fine-tuned over the next few days. I don't only have Starlink into that. I live in rural Alberta. I'm doing the best I can to bring you guys content. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen, have a fantastic day. You deserve it.